Hello and welcome to the Iceman channel. I got some feedback from Philip about my previous videos that I should explain a little bit more about the plot window. So this video is about the data plot window. Let's get started. I need to set up some things and you will just watch me doing things. I will move some windows around so we can get started. And I'm running latest source. Let's start with data plot and look at the help text. Tells you to show the graph window. It's also called the graph window, but I prefer to call it the plot window. Both goes. It also says hit age in the window to see some detailed increase stroke helps. Now this is interesting. Let's start up the plot window. Now I have my proximal clients in focus. And if I click up here, the data plot window is in focus. As instructed, if I have the plot window focused, and press H on keyboard, you will see you will get a detailed help text about what kind of key you can press in the plot file, in the plot window when it's focused and what's going to happen. You can zoom, you can go light and left and do more things. Read that one there, the help text, and you sort it out. So I need to do uh, load a trace. I need to load a trace so we have something to look at, right? I will load this trace because it's big, nice, and strong. I will zoom out so we look at it. And normally, when it's loaded up, I right, I left click. You will see I get a, the yellow mark. If I right click, I will get the purple mark. And if I want to do I press T now, everything outside from the yellow marker to the purple marker will disappear. Will be trimmed. This is how that looks like, which is nice when you want to cut off a part of a scene and just look at that. The plot window also automatically scrolls and adapts to the maximum and minimum values that's in the viewport because you zoom out and you look at the viewport of the signal. So you will see that sometimes it jumps up and down and you wonder what's going on. What you need to know is to look at up here on the left side, you see the values, how strong the amplitude is is to make sure that you see what happens. Sometimes when it cuts to a small part, it becomes zeros. Then you have to understand, aha, I'm very zoomed in right now. Of course, that's what the plot window does automatically for you. I will reload this trace because I want the whole trace to be there. And if I go with buttons, if I go with the uh, with, uh, right and left buttons, the arrows, it goes step by step. If I press with control, you will see the step-by-step -step is one sample ahead. If I press end, it will jump to the end of the trace. If I press home, it will jump to the, first, uh, to the start of the trace. I can go page up to go and page down to go window by window. in the zoomed out along the trace. All right. I can also use the scroll wheel on my mouse to scroll left and right, which is nice. However, I want to zoom. For this, you can use the up arrow or down arrow to zoom in, up arrow to zoom out, or uh, it uses just you know where you are. Or I can use the scroll of the mouse, uh, but then I need to press shift. So if I go here and I press shift and I scroll up, you will see it zooms out. And if I scroll out or backwards towards me, it will scroll and it will zoom in. Now, it will only do that where my cursor are. So if I have my cursor here and I zoom in or out, you will see it will focus on that part, all right? So if I go here and I zoom in, you will see that it focus here. That's good to know if you get confused what's going on, but you can always do the up and down arrows. So let's see. Gridlocks. All right, let's zoom in a bit and look at things for gridlocks. We haven't done timings as well. Okay, let's do time scale. There's a nift command called time scale. And if you run the h command, you will see a sample down here that says uh, samples 125 samples is one milliseconds. Now, if you're working like we do now on low frequency signals, this is very good to have. So if I turn this one on, you will see I get something down here, what is this, MS, and if I press the 
right, so I see the purple one, you will see how much time that would have been executed or passed between the yellow and the purple lines. So if I zoom out and I want to see from here and here, or between the end of this part here and the beginning of this part here, that would have been 27.34 micros, oh, milliseconds. So that's very helpful for, for knowing how long things was or duration of things. Let's zoom in and look at some more things. If I go here and here and I look, let's do more, zoom in more, and I go here. I see the distance here, the DT part says, let me just emphasize that. I will emphasize it by saying here. The distance is here. Uh -huh. So, all right, so that is means that between this one is 33 samples, and a normal clock would be 32. And if I put uh, this one here and I put it here, the number of crossings is 31, and here is 32, and we see it kind of decent 32 pattern going on, right? So, we can do something called data grid. The help text it tells you that you can see the x and markers and the y markers you can set and we want to set in this case we assume it's 32 because that's what we're seeing between the yellow and the purple markers let's do data grid x32 you will see that we get some columns here going on i press and click and focus on the dot window and go with my arrows left and right you see that the trace signal moves around but the column lines, the markers, the gray markers, doesn't. It would it be nice if I can lock it so it fits nicely together? Luckily, there's a command for that. If I do control shift, uh, control on the left and right arrows, I can align up these waves to those back columns. And now, while the clock window is, is in focus, I can press L to lock it. It now says, L locked here. I know it looks like crap, but whatever. And now when you go left and right, you will see that the background grids are moving along with it. And that's helpful when you zoom out, and then you see that you actually got the correct uh, timing between these. Nifty, isn't it? If I press L again, because it's a toggle button, can I move the uh, take the left and right arrow, you see how the trace signal moves around in the viewport, but the background uh, grids doesn't. Now, I did the grid, I did that, and we don't want to see this anymore. You can either do grid zero down here to remove it, or you can just press G in while the plot window is activated or in focus, you just press E to toggle them on and off. Nice, isn't it? Now, next one. Why is its strong signal cut off and not cut off? All right, perfect. So you see this flat top here on the cut off, or AKA strong signal. Since the proxmark ADC is only eight bits, we can only get values between zero and 255. Now, that means if the amplitude of a signal is very, very strong, that part gets cut off. So you should imagine this being a, if you look like this, we can see, you can imagine that the signal actually went like this, and like this, you know, but that got cut off because of ADC. Uh, when you have a smaller copying, so if you take a card above your proxmo to make a read, you will see that it fits and you can see the whole wave nicely. Next part of uh, Philip wanted me to explain a little bit better is that after we did this, let me take those away. After we did this uh, signal, you see this part here, especially from the part three sniffing video, you see this part here is when the signal is attenuating. The signal starts up here and then the radius really turns it off and the signal attenuates down to the zero voltage or the zero line. It still means that it was on, it was a pulse. Imagine a square wave that this was a high and here was a low, and here the signal attenuates a little bit before it's starting doing some things. Here it did more, 
usually is to you know to double up things but this is called attenuating all right let's see if i can scroll out even more okay if i want to do some data raw raw commands and do am transfers as modulated you will see in the plot window that we get the de decoded data signal out of this trace along with the grid lines for the, for the clock so if i zoom in I, i'm more i make the plot window focus i zoom in you see the clock is there and you see what the data bits behind would look like same thing here if you want to hide it press g and it's gone press g and it comes back and this is very good to see how it works this is on uh, ASK Manchester signal. So it goes from high to low, high to low, high to low, high to low. And here was low to high. And I zoom out and you can see the whole message decoded like this. And if I want to tell the LF search to demodulate this and see if it matches with anything, I would do dash one. And it will just cut off say power need up, but it also will only show the part what is encoded for the need up message. So it starts with this message here and it ends here. So you can see in this case when you zoom out, this message is repeated once and then twice here and then three times here in this trace. Now I hope all of this made sense or you get a more understanding how the plot window works. Uh, and let me know in the comments below if it's something that you missed. Close the plot window, you have several options. You can press the X up in the right corner. You can type in data hide and it will go away. Or you can press Q when the plot window is activated, so in, or in focus. So I focus the plot window now, I press Q and it's gone. And if I turn it on again, it's up, you see all that was there, I can do data hide, and it's gone. Easy. So, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and have a good day.